This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 3 from Module 5, Grade 7, Chance Experiments with Equally Likely Outcomes. In this lesson, students will learn to determine the possible outcomes for simple chance experiments. Given a description of a simple chance experiment, students determine the sample space for the experiment. Given a description of a chance experiment and an event, Students determine for which outcomes in the sample space the event will occur. Students distinguish between chance experiments with equally likely outcomes and the chance experiments for which outcomes are not equally likely. Pause the video and copy the essential question. What is an outcome and a sample space of an experiment? In example one, Jamal, a 7th grader, wants to design a game that involves tossing paper cups. Jamal tosses a paper cup five times and records the outcome of each toss. An outcome is the result of a single trial of an experiment. That's a vocabulary word that you'll want to memorize. An outcome is the result of a single trial of an experiment. Here are the results of each toss. A cup landed on its side here. It landed right side up. It landed upside down. It landed on its side and it landed on its side. Each one of those is an outcome. Jamal noted that the paper cup could land in one of three ways, on its side, right side up, or upside down. The collection of these three outcomes is called the sample space. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes of that experiment. It's what could happen. For example, the sample space when flipping a coin is heads and tails. Sample space for flipping a coin is heads and tails. The sample space when drawing a colored cube from a bag that has three red, two blue, one yellow, and four green cubes. The sample space is the different colors, red, blue, yellow, and green. The sample space doesn't have anything to do with how many times you draw that color or how many cubes of that color there are. They're just what are the different colors that could be drawn. For exercises one through six, for each of the following chance experiments, list the sample space. And again, the sample space is the possible outcomes. Drawing a colored cube from a bag with two green, one red, 10 blue, and three black. So again, it doesn't matter how many cubes there are or if they're cubes or marbles. What matters is how many different colors there are. So the sample space consists of green, because you could draw a green cube, red, blue, and black. A sample space is what could be drawn. Number two, tossing an empty soup can to see how it lands. Well, just like our paper cup, an empty soup can could leave, could land right side up, It could land upside down and it could also land on its side. So there are three outcomes when tossing a can, right side up, upside down, or on its side. Number three, shooting a free throw in a basketball game. But what could happen when you shoot the basket? You either make it or you miss it. So there are two outcomes. You either make the shot or you miss the shot. Number four, rolling a number cube with the numbers one through six on its faces. Well, when you roll a number cube or a dice, you could land on a one, or a two, or a three, a four, a five, or 
you could land on the six. Number five, selecting a letter from the word probability. So the sample outcomes, you could draw the letter P, you could draw the letter O, you could draw the letter R, you could draw the letter B, you could draw the letter A, you could draw the letter B. Now we've already listed B, so we will not list it twice. You could draw the letter I, you could draw the letter L, and you could draw the letter T. And the last one is the letter Y. So we have P-R-O-B-A-I-L-T-N-Y. Those are the sample space. Notice that when a letter appeared twice in the word that we did not list it twice. Number six, spinning the spinner. When you spin the spinner, you could land on the one or the two or the three or the four or the five or the six or the seven or the eight. There are eight possible outcomes. Example two, equally likely outcomes. The sample space for the paper cup toss was on its side, right side up and upside down. Do you think that each of these outcomes has the same chance of occurring? If they do, then they are equally likely to occur. The outcomes of an experiment are equally likely to occur when the probability of each outcome is equal. Okay, again, the outcomes of an experiment are equally likely to occur when the probability of each outcome is equal. Toss the paper cup 30 times and record in a table the results of each toss. So I'm going to go ahead and do this activity and I'll record an S if it lands on its side, an R for right side up, and a U for upside down. And then we'll talk about the data. So I've done the experiment and I've recorded my data below. Question number seven. Using the results of your experiment, what is your estimate for the probability a paper cup lands on its side? Okay. So again, we are using the results from the experiment and we are giving an estimate on the probability that it lands on its side. So I just need to count how many times it landed on its side. And I count my list here and I see I have a lot of them, them landing on their side. And it landed on its side 15 times. So 15 out of 30. And remember that probability is a fraction that compares the outcomes, the number of outcomes that are possible to the number of favorable outcomes. Well, favorable outcomes in this case would be the times it landed on its side. So we have the number that it landed on its side over the number of tosses. So we have 15 out of 30. And we can simplify that. We can write it as one half. We could also write it as a decimal. We could also write it as a percent. Using the result of your experiment, what is your estimate for the probability of a paper cup landing upside down? So again, I have to count how many times it lands upside down. I know my denominator is 30 because there were 30 tosses. So I count on my list how many times it lands upside down. And that was nine times. So nine times it landed upside down. And the denominator is the number of tosses. Number nine, using the results of your experiment, what is your estimate for the probability of a paper cup landing right side up? Again, I know my denominator is going to be 30 because that is the number of tosses. And the number of times it landed right side up, so I just go back here and I count all of the R's, right side up, right side up. And that number was six times. So six times it landed 
right side up. So notice that my numerator is the number of favorable outcomes, in other words, what you were wanting to happen, and then the denominator is how many times you performed the experiment, and we did that 30 times. Take a look at your numerators. Notice that I have as numerators 15, 9, and 6. If I add those together, what do you think I would get? 30, because I was only counting three different things. So that would take care of all of the options for how many tosses I had. Number 10, based on your results, do you think the three outcomes are equally likely to occur? Well, you might be swayed by this 50% right here and say, oh yeah, 50%, that's half, that's equally likely. Well, they're asking about all three outcomes. Are you as likely to get it on its side as you are to get it upside down as you are to get it on its right side? So if the three outcomes are equally likely, that means out of 30 tosses, you would have about the same amount of on its side, on upside down, and right side up. And we don't have the same number. We have clearly a lot more that landed on its side than landed upside down or right side up. So these are not equally likely. The answer is no. If they were equally likely, the numerators would be what? they would be equal. And if they were equal, what would they be? They would all be 10. 10 out of 30 for its side, 10 out of 30 for upside down, and 10 out of 30 for the right side up. So they are not equally likely. Exercises 11 and 12. Using the spinner, answer the following questions. So we have a spinner, and half of it has the number 3 area on it and then the other half is split up into two equal sections, section one and section two. Are the events of spinning and landing on a one or two equally likely? The one and the two are the same amount of area, so they are equally likely. Yes, the area of one and two are the same size. So they are equally likely. Question B. Are the events of spinning and landing on two or three equally likely? Well, notice that two is a small area and three is a large area. So they are not equally likely. No. The area for sections two and three are not equal, so they are not equally likely. C. How many times do you predict the spinner will land on each section after 100 spins? All right, so 100 spins, and we have half of the section that is in section 3. So we would expect that half of the time the spinner will end up in section 3. So half the time in section 3. Well, there are 100 spins, so half of 100 is 50. So we would ex expect 50 out of 100 to end up in section 3. All right, let's take a look at section 1. 
Section 1 is a fourth of the circle. So we would expect that a fourth of the time it will land in section 1. So 1 fourth of 100 is 25. So we would expect it to land in section 1 25 out of 100 times. Now, section 2 is the same size as section 1. So we would expect, and uh, these quotation marks mean that is the same data, a fourth of the time in section 2, a fourth of the data is 25, and so we would expect it to land in section 2 25 out of 100 times as well. Number 12, draw a spinner that has three sections that are equally likely to occur when the spinner is spun. So we need a circle and a dot in the center, and we need to divide it into three equal sections. If you think about the circle being a clock, and you draw a line from the center to 12 o'clock noon, that will be one of your lines. Then if we take our 60 minutes in a clock and divide it into three equal sections, 60 minutes divided into three equal sections is 20 minutes. So at 20 minutes after, so 20 minutes after would be 5, 10, 15, 20. That would be the number 4 on the clock. So if you draw a line from the center to the 4, then 20 minutes later would be at 40 minutes after. So we'll keep going, that's 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And that would be the number eight on the clock. So that would be about there. So it's sort of like a peace sign with the, the dot in the center of the circle. And then we have one of the rays going to 12 o'clock, one of them going to four o'clock, and one of them going to eight o'clock. And that's how you divide a circle into three equal sections. So we've split it into three equal sections. How many times do you think the spinner will land on each section after 100 spins? If the circle is divided into three equal sections, we would think it's equally likely to land in each section. So we would divide that 100 three ways. So we have 100, 100 spins divided by three sections, and that's going to give us 33 with one left over, so 33 and a third. So how many times do you think it will land in each section after 100 spin? That will be about 33 times. So we took our 100 spins and divided it by 3 because there are 3 equal sections. Let's summarize what we've learned in this lesson. First, we went over the word outcome. An outcome is the result of a single observation of an experiment. It's what could happen. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes of that experiment. It's all of the different things that could happen. The outcomes of an experiment are equally likely to occur when the probability of an outcome is equal. Suppose a bag of 10 green, 10 red, 10 yellow, 10 orange, and 10 purple crayons. Complete the following statements if one crayon is selected from the bag and the color is noted. So in your summary, please write down the above statements, but this part, let's just practice. The outcome is what? What is the outcome in this problem? Remember that an outcome is what could happen. So the outcome is the color that will be chosen. The sample space. The sample space is the total of the different things that could happen. And that includes the colors, green, red, yellow, orange, and purple. Each color is equally likely to be selected because each color has the same chance of being chosen. And that summarizes what we've learned in Lesson 3.